Tesla and Elon Musk revealed the existence of its bioweapon defense mode in uh, Tesla Model S and Model X. Uh, back when the original Model X deliveries came out several years ago. Uh, it consists of a ginormous um, HEPA filter as a primary filter and then an additional one, uh, secondary filter, which is actually as big, actually a little bit bigger than most cars' primary filters. In addition to the crazy amounts of uh, particle filtration ability, it also has three layers of activated uh, carbon filtration to um, like one layer to filter out acidic gases, one layer to uh, filter out alkaline gases, as well as, well as uh, activated carbon universal absorbent layer. And the net result is an insane level of air filtration, purification, neutralization, whatever you wanna call it. And Tesla claims you can literally survive a military grade uh, bioweapon attack um, in your car using bioweapon defense mode. And in this video, I'm going to test the particle filtration using a laser particle detector. This particular one is made by a company called Temtop, and it's got some vents on top where it uh, takes in a sample of air and subjects it to a laser. It probably measures the light scatter or something like that. Uh, there's a button called PM 2.5 and then there's one called PM 10. PM 2.5 refers to particles that are less than 2.5 microns in greatest diameter and then PM 10 stands for particulate matter less than 10 microns uh, in diameter and it shows the results as micrograms per cubic millimeter. So you can see here it's giving a reading for um, particulate matter 2.5 of about 14, well okay low teens, and then for a particulate matter um, 10 it's giving a reading of about 17. It fluctuates a little bit um, depending on each air sample that it takes. Now just briefly about what we're measuring here, um, so particles are generally measured in um, microns. One micron is one one thousandth of a millimeter. Uh, a human hair is approximately 50 microns across. Once you get down below about 10 microns, you get to the point where you can't really see these particles with the naked eye. So the category PM10, particulate matter uh, 10, refers to particles that are less than 10 microns. This would include uh, dust, some large bacteria, um, molds, uh, things like that. <clears throat> some things, some particles like um, fog water droplets, you can't actually see individual ones, but if there's enough of them, they affect the light transmittance, and so you can actually see them as a cloud. Uh, the second category, which is smaller, PM 2.5, refers to particulate matter that is less than 2.5 microns. Um, this includes a whole host of things. Uh, it includes bacteria, uh, viruses, which are actually measured in terms of like nanometers. They're quite, quite small. Um, and a lot of very fine industrial pollutants, combustion uh, materials. And it does include also uh, toxic gases um, like uh, sulfuric di um, sulfur dioxide, um, ammonia. Now, gases are a little bit different because um, they're atoms that are aerosolized uh, when they're first produced but they can join up with other particles um, and uh, form, well, particles that can actually be filtered um, by particulate filters. The gas themselves, though, um, are not um, filtered by particle filters. So, and that's why you need the activated carbon uh, layers to filter out the actual native gases. So these categories are very broad. Um, but they're important because particularly uh, particles that are less than 2.5 microns are the ones that are associated with uh, adverse health, eff health effects. And so the detector that I'm using only uh, detects um, particles. So let's see how Model X and bioweapon defense mode does. So today we have a pretty good amount of particulate matter. Um, I've got the PM10 reading as 24 micrograms per cubic millimeter and the particulate matter 2.5 pm 2.5 is reading at 17 so that's a decent amount to do some testing so let's go ahead and turn on bioweapon defense mode which turns on the ac keeps the air coming in from the outside uh, so fresh air and um, it puts it puts the uh, fan speed at nine millimeters millimeters um, nine, it's not a size. So 
Already we can see some movement in the PM 2.5. Let's check in at the PM 10s. Yeah, already going down. And uh, yeah, so we'll just watch this. PM 10 at 3, PM 2.5 at 2, and time is now 12.38, so we've been going about two minutes. All right, so we've had bioweapon defense mode on for about uh, nine minutes, just about. And um, so uh, PM 2.5 is still hanging around one to two uh, micrograms per uh, cubic millimeter, and PM 10 has been around two to three, uh, probably mostly two. I have tested this before, and it's gone down to zero. Um, so I don't know if this is just kind of the lower limit of this testing unit. This isn't the most expensive um, unit. In fact, it's the cheapest one I could find. Um, I mean, although it does seem to work. Uh, yeah, so now here it's down to one for the smaller particulate matter. Um, anyway, there's the test of bioweapon defense mode. So now I've just opened the windows, got a nice breeze going through here, um, and so let's turn on the detect particle detector again. All right, initial read of 11 for 2.5, an initial read of 15 for PM10. I'm gonna close the windows. Now we're gonna turn on the AC. Uh oh. And have the same settings as before, uh, but no bioweapon defense mode. And so we've been going a minute or less. We can already see a significant uh, decrease in the PM 2.5, as well as the PM 10. Uh, we're down to the lower levels. And um, yeah, we'll let this go for uh, maybe five minutes and we'll see how low it goes. All right, we've been going about uh, five minutes, almost five minutes, and um, PM 2.5 actually breached down to one. PM 10 is at two, so <laughs> that's actually a little better than the bioweapon defense mode. So um, again, it's, I don't know if this is like at the lower limits of this thing's measuring ability. It's supposed to be able to go down measure to one uh, microgram per cubic millimeter but so now let's turn bioweapon defense mode on if it if it uses the same ginormous HEPA filter regardless of what system is what's going on in terms of the settings then it's going to filter out the same amount of particulate matter regardless of what setting is on so I'll give it a minute or two oh look at that okay so PM10 is and eh, it's hovering PM 2.5, hovering. So, I'll give it a minute or two and we'll see if there's any difference. All right, so bioweapon defense mode has been going for a while. PM 10 is hovering around one to two. PM 2.5 is hovering again, also around one to two, so not a whole lot different. All right, I just opened the windows, got some fresh air again. Uh, get some more particulate matter in here. Air again on a fan setting of nine. External air, but I'm gonna have the AC off because I'm kind of curious if it uses different channels with the AC off. So, so it's been less than a minute and we can already see a very good decrease in the PM 2.5. Let's check PM 10, we're at seven micrograms per millimeter, or um, yeah, millimeter, cubic millimeter, two and two. I sound like a baseball announcer. The 2-2 pitch. Lopped it over his shoulder. All right, we'll let it go for another minute or two and uh, check back if there's any significant change. We'll see if it can get it down to one. Oh, well, okay, there it is. <laughs> there's the one. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put bioweapon defense mode. All right, so we've got the PM10 down to one. It was kind of stuck at two to three. Oh, there we go, boom, we got it to zero. <laughs> All right, 2.5 is at zero. PM10 is at zero. There we go, now we've got some real bioweapon defense mode results here. Okay, zero to one, work with me here. 
So it's pretty clear from these initial tests that uh, it doesn't matter what settings you have uh, the HVAC system on, it will filter particulates um, pretty much the same, which makes sense because it pretty much puts the air through all those filters regardless of what setting you have it on. So of course we need to compare that to something in an older vehicle. So this is the 2017 Model S. And uh, so let's test the air quality in here. I'm sitting in my garage. So after letting the air equilibrate a little bit, uh, we've settled on PM10 of 2.25 uh, and uh, PM2.5 of 18. So with that, let's turn on the air here. So I've got the AC on, I've got uh, external air and the uh, fan setting at nine. Let's give it some time and um, we'll come back and see what it did three minutes at least. You might think that's kind of short, but if you're in, a po in an apocalyptic situation, you don't have a whole lot of time to hold your breath, so let's check in. We've got uh, PM 2.5 at 18 micrograms per cubic mil millimeter, and PM 10 is at 26 micrograms per cubic millimeter. So essentially um, no improvement in the 2015 Model S air quality um, at these settings. Now, just so you don't accuse me of too much bias, let's go into the Model X. So I've got an initial reading right here of 30 for the PM10, maybe decreasing a little bit, and 20 for PM2.5. Let's turn on bioweapon defense mode. Also gotta roll up all the windows. Well, it's been uh, almost two minutes, right about two minutes, and the PM10 is down to four, and the PM2.5 is down to three. So obviously a drastic uh, change. Um, even in the same garage, at the same time, Model X HEPA filtration wins. At least over a 2015 Model S. So I hope you found that video interesting. I thought it was very interesting how well the new HEPA filters um, in Tesla Model S and Model X uh, work to uh, filter out particulate matter and how good it is. Um, the filters are not available in the Model 3. Elon Musk has said that that's basically a size issue. The filter is so huge that they, um, they can't do the full bioweapon defense mode uh, package on a Model 3. But it does seem to work quite well um, in uh, the Model X that I have, 2018. Also, one interesting thing uh, in the manual, it says that even though it does filter out viruses and toxins and toxic gases and stuff like that, um, even the, the activated carbon coatings do not filter out carbon monoxide. So that means that if you're using it in a garage setting where another um, combustion engine vehicle is running or you're uh, you know, very close behind a car behind you, um, it will fil filter out a lot of those pollutants, but it won't necessarily filter out the carbon, um, carbon monoxide. And uh, that's a very serious um, component that you want to be aware of, because carbon monoxide poisoning is very easy uh, to occur when it builds up, since it's odorless and um, tasteless and invisible. So anyway, there's a public service announcement there. Also, the activated carbon filter uh, situation, it's, it's not a separate filter. Um, they are layered on top of both the primary giant HEPA filter as well as the secondary filter. So it's not like a separate system. But anyway, I know this video was a little bit uh, long and technical, slightly nerdy, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video.